Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this, an open hexagon pendant necklace. Now, if you follow the Online Jewelry Academy on social media, then you might have seen photographs of this necklace or of its components on Facebook and Instagram. And guess what? The response was tremendous. In fact, you guys put more likes to those photos than on any other photos that we've posted. So here it is. I'm finally showing you how to make this necklace. Now, the components to the necklace, as you can see, are basic just hexagon cutouts, pieces of tubing. And they are joined together through soldering. And I made elements like this. Now, they're just stacked one on top of another. And if you don't like my design, guess what? You could turn it around, you could put it sideways, you can do whatever you want. This gives you a lot of freedom to really be a jewelry designer. All right, so let's look over here. These are the elements that go into making the project. Now, these are 17 millimeter pieces of hexagon tubing. That's from point to point. And these are 25 millimeter pieces, again, from point to point. They were cut from a large piece of tubing like this one. Of course, you have to get it nice and shiny and tape it up and cut it in a either tube cutting jig or a 45, 90 degree cutting jig, which we have videos on. And you need to combine it with brass chain and brass jump rings. And these were made on a coiling tool and I cut them myself. And guess what? There's a video on that too. But if you're feeling a little lazy, guess what? You can order them already cut from China. I'll tell you where exactly at the end of this video. So let's look at some of the pieces or some of the tools that I need to make this piece. First, I have my butane torch. I've got a pair of copper tongs so that I can handle the hot metal. This is my solder pick and I've got a pair of tweezers. I may need these in order to handle the pieces while I'm setting up and soldering. And I'm going to be using paste solder. Now, you've seen this in another video. And what's great about paste solder is that it just takes a little bit in order to get things together. So I'm going to apply some to a seam right now. And you can see the seams are really close together. And I don't need a continuous bead of this stuff. All I need is enough of the paste solder to actually just fill the seam. To speed up this video, I've already filled the other two seams. Okay, so let's get our torch lit. The ventilation's on. We have a video on how to make this too. And what you need to do is remember, solder flows best when you heat the larger elements first and allow heat to transfer into your seams. Now, this is a magnesia block that I've pre-notched in order to receive these things so that they lay down flat. Now, if they come up a little bit, that's what your solder picks for, just to push them back into place. Okay, the solder's flowed. We want to quench our tool so nobody gets burned. And now I can pick up my piece and quench it. Now I just need to pickle this and then I'll show you how to assemble the piece together. Okay, the pieces are out of the pickle pot now and I'm ready to solder. But let me explain what I did to set this up. The first thing that you need to do is to identify which side you soldered on to begin with. And that's easy to do. You'll just see some silver solder on the back side. Next, what I did is I put one of the components back into the magnesia block with the solder side up. And then I stacked the second component on top of it so that the corners align. Now I did this because I want the solder to all be on the back side so I have a nice clean front. Now if you get a little solder on the front side, you can always remove it with a little bit of filing or sandpaper. Or if it's a terrible mess, you can always get it plated. But now I've got all the pieces set up and then I used the Lazy Susan to help me to find each of these corners and just apply a little bit of paste solder to those corners. And now I'm ready to solder. It's always good to have your solder pick in your other hand just in case you need it. 
I'm going to just lightly apply the heat first so that you give the flux solder combination a chance to dry out. Remember to heat your piece evenly. Now I'm concentrating a little bit more heat on the areas where I want the connections to occur just to make sure that they get soldered. That ought to do it. It's all together. And there it is. Now I just need to pop this into the pickle pot to clean it up. I'll be back to show you the result. Okay, I got the component out of the pickle pot and I want to show you what it looks like. Now this is the back side of the piece and you can see there's a little bit of a blush of silver solder. Not a big deal. Easy to remove with needle files, sandpaper, whatever. Take you seconds. But let's turn it over. Voila, look at that. The front is nice and clean and it's ready to be put together if you want. But if you want to make it a little shinier, you could tumble it. All you're going to need to put it together are a couple of connectors. They're just simple jump rings. And then I added a couple of smaller open hex shapes. And then I connected them to a chain. Now, if you want to add a clasp to your chain, you can if you want. You're a designer. Or you could just make it long enough to fit over your head. Anyway, we have videos on how to do all of the assembly work and how to make some of the components themselves. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, this video was made in March of 2018. So if you're watching it a little later, let me tell you what I searched for were hexagonal brass tubes. But the source that I used for this is an Etsy store called Raw Brass. It's in China, so it's going to take a little bit of time for you to get your pieces, but they will send them to you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure and like it and share it with your friends. Remember, you can watch the entire Online Jewelry Academy playlist at onlinejewelryacademy.com. If you're not already a subscriber, just click on the button on the lower right hand corner of your screen and you'll instantly become a subscriber. And if you'd like to support the production of a future Online Jewelry Academy video, you can do so with a contribution made through patreon.com. Thanks for watching.